Johns. Good evening, everybody. How are you doing tonight? It's your boy DC, and this is Out of the Fog on Rogers TV. 20 plus years of talking to all the cool people across the province that are making this place the place to be. Tonight we have David Buckingham from Jane's and Noseworthy talking about financial health and how it's okay to hit a financial rough patch and what him and his team got to say to help you out of it. Kathy Hicks and Keith coming down the pipe from Spirit of Newfoundland Productions, an incredible run in the Masonic Theater. They're talking about what's next and how lucky we are to have the cultural scene that we do. And finally, Music NL, we have some amazing staff coming through to talk about everything that Music NL is doing to make our musical sector more successful and are doing an amazing job so far. This is Out of the Fog and we want you to come right on back after this break. Welcome back everybody, this is Out of the Fog and I always like to make sure that we're balancing out everything that's happening in our province because folks need to know. I'm joined by licensed insolvency trustee at Jane's and Noseworthy, the one and only David Buckingham. How are you doing? Donnie, I'm doing good, thanks for having me. Oh my God, I'll tell you what, it's an interesting time here I would say in the province and around the world, it right? Cer it certainly is, it's been a, a very interesting time, especially in our, uh, our industry, especially since COVID hit. Now, I want to start off by being very clear about what a licensed insolvency trustee is, and I'll hand it over to you. So, uh, what we do and people at our firm do is basically we provide financial advice. Mm -hmm. um, people come to us, um, generally speaking, they're in, you know, in significant financial uh, debt. Mm -hmm. They come to us, we sit down as an independent uh, professional, and we look at their situation and provide them with their options. Um, Generally speaking, you know, a lot of time people come to see us, that option revolves around some form of an insolvency, whether it's a bankruptcy or a consumer proposal. Um, however, if there's other options out there for them, whether it's, you know, remortgaging their home, you know, consolidation loans, a tweak in their budget, uh, we'll talk to them about that as well. Um, I guess the biggest thing that they'll know is uh, the sooner you come to see it, someone mm. like me, whether it's in, you know, myself or a different licensed insolvency trustee, right. the more options you have. Right. Um, but generally speaking, by the time we get involved, we're looking at some form of insolvency. And it's interesting that you say that because I can only imagine that what leads folks from reaching out to you sooner is a lot of the stigma that we may have around fear or insecurity when it comes to debt. And really the, the conversation uh, from what I've been able to learn is that financial health is where we want to try to get everybody in our province and beyond to really zoom in on maintaining that versus what can often happen if we don't address that. You must hear a lot of stories from the people that you end up meeting. Yeah. And how does it make you feel to be able to provide such help to people who are going through such times? Well, everyone's different and everyone's story is different. Mm. Um, and when people come to see us, we need to let them tell us that story because mm. it's very important to people. Um, you know, I tell people every day, nobody likes to come see me at work. Hmm. Uh, most people are generally quicker to tell you they've got some form of a medical issue than they've got issues with their finances. Right. It's, it's, you know, the big bad B word of bankruptcy. Yeah. Nobody likes to talk about it. Right. Um, but once they come in, they realize that, you know, the team at Jane's knows we're not here to judge. Um, you know, we're here to help you out, go forward, provide you with your options. Right. Um, and kind of work you down that path to not only, um, you know, remove the burden of the debt that you have, um, but through the counseling process and other uh, items that we do to try and get you into a better financial health go forward down the road so that once you get over this rough patch, right. you know, you can continue on down the road and, uh, you know, with better financial health and, you know, not need someone's services like us in the future. I can only imagine that some of the people that you've been uh, able to meet and to help can look back now, maybe a year, a month, six months, two years and say, wow, I'm so thankful that I reached out and that it was okay that I reached out to get the help that I needed at that time. And I wonder if you would agree that the things that are happening in our economy are contributing to more and more people maybe finding themselves in the need of help? Yeah, it, it's been a, you know, like I said, it's been a different world for everyone in a mm -hmm. lot of different uh, sectors, uh, especially since COVID. Um, and with the interest rates that we see today, um, you know, the cost of living increases, you know, that's really 
cutting into people's monthly uh, cash flow. Oh yeah. Um, you know, people who haven't had that mortgage renewal yet, um, well, that's something you want to prepare for if it's in the next couple of months or the next year, because you know, historically low interest rates of you know one and two percent. Um, you know, people are now uh, renegotiating those, and they're coming in at five and six percent. That's a big jump. Wow. Um, so people want to know, you know, you know, what's coming in versus what's going out. Sure. You know, in the basics, um, and ensuring that you're preparing for that is going to be, you know, a, a big thing go forward for individuals. For sure. Um, and the cost of living for everything else, whether it's your gas, your your heat and light, things of that nature, it's it's eating into the budget that people have, and it's taking away the play money that people have to use with or the money that they had that they used to be able to pay their debt with. Yeah, I know, it's interesting to me, and I mean, I'll tell you what, a lot of people around me, and I have older friends, younger friends, people in you know, with, with full families and singles, and it is the conversation. Yeah. Oh my God, my heat bill last month was this. Oh my God, my mortgage is, you know, is up for renewal in a few months. What do you, as an expert in this subject, have to say to the viewers across the province and beyond who are also experiencing that, and, and what is your general advice that you would give anyone that would come up to you expressing insecurity about their financial welfare? Um, well, I guess the first thing to do is, um, you know, to reach out for help. Mm. And as I said earlier, the sooner you do that, the more mm. flexibility you have, the more options you have. Right. Um, and, you know, to talk about finances. Um, it's, it's very, I don't know what faux pas is the word, but mm. as I said before, people talk that at a dinner table about multiple things, <laughs> but you <laughs> no. don't normally hear people talk about their finances. Yeah. Um, and that's important. It's important to understand, you know, this, you know, back to the basics of a budget. You know, what's my income going out, coming in versus what my expenses are going out. And that's so basic. And yeah. yet, you're right. We talk about, you know, our, our health in so many capacities. And I do believe that the subject of financial health needs to be culturalized yeah. and it needs to be normalized because it's the shame and the insecurity and the overwhelm that keeps us from being able to stop things before they get worse. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of people try and, you know, they'll try and fix it on their own or they'll try a whole bunch of different options before they speak to a licensed insolvency trustee. Um, and you want to make sure that who you're speaking to mm. is getting proper advice, especially now in today's day and age with the, with the internet. There's a lot of unlicensed, unregulated individuals out there who claim that they can help you. Right. The only person in Canada who can file a bankruptcy or a consumer proposal is a licensed trustee. Mm. So as long as you see those words, you know you're getting advice from a professional, from a regulated uh, professional, and uh, you know that they're going to lead you down the right path. So that's one thing I want to make sure people um, are aware of. When you're looking for that advice, make sure you're looking in the right place. I can only imagine that a firm like Jane's and Noseworthy, which has been around, what, over 35 years? Yes, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is a history of helping Newfoundlanders and Labradorians get out of debt. Are you proud to be associated with a team who has that cachet and history of, of helping so many folks in our province? Very proud. You know, we're, we're locally run, locally owned. Um, our employees are all local. Um, and like I said, we're here. We're here to help. We're not here to judge. Um, and we'll tell people when they come to meet with us, if, you know, if there's options for them that don't involve a formal insolvency, we'll, we'll, we'll let them know that. We won't just push them down the road of a bankruptcy or a consumer proposal. However, as I said, most times that's where, where the conversation leads. Um, but you know what, we're Newfoundlanders here to help Newfoundlanders. And you know, we love what we do and we love the fact that we can help uh, people in our province get over that hump um, you know, and move on with their life. Because you're right, there is life after bankruptcy. And, and some folks of mine that have been through that intimate journey, they look back and they're like, oh, I'm so glad I did it because what they learn along the way really helps them level up uh, and achieve more of financial health for the long game, which I think is yeah. you know, proof that you know, companies that do that are very needed here in the yeah. province. And, and that's the big thing, uh, Donnie. It's the one thing to get rid of that debt burden, but it's, I guess, the rehabilitation to get you over the hump, mm -hmm. you know, to get down the road and not need some services like that in the future. Um, and a lot of people tell me after they come meet with us, you know, our stairs are very hard to walk up. You know, our phone number is a very hard one to call. <laughs> um, but once they speak to oh, us, you know, they'll they'll call us the next day. Say, last mm. night was the first time I slept in wow. however many months or years because that not just that the burden is gone, but they know there's a, there's a plan, there's a path forward, mm -hmm. um, and they know what impacts that that plan has for them, whether it's you know, time frame, credit score, all that kind of stuff that people are worried about, and just right. knowing what that what the options are. Reveals or relieves a lot of stress. I bet, and I'll yeah. tell you what. Uh, seeing that you guys, I saw yours there uh, yeah. the other day, <laughs> and all the Jameson knows the team stepping up with good advice in reels, which we all know are the edutaining social media moments we see in all the channels. And how is that going for you guys? And are people watching those and feeling like they're getting the good advice? 
Um, I think so. They're they're starting to uh, they resonate a lot. We're getting some phone calls. People have Correct. seen our reels on you know whether it's Facebook, Twitter, right. uh, things of that nature. Um, and the biggest thing that uh, when they call is um, I don't know if they're shocked, but they're they're happy to realize that the individuals there there are employees. They're not actors. You know when you pick up the phone. Um, and your college agents knows that you're going to get one of the people that are on that reel, and you That's can awesome. speak to them, and you can ask them questions. Um, you know that they're they're local, they're here to help, and I think it breaks down some of those barriers of, you know, who am I going to get when I call, mm. right? I love it. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I know that yourself and Ian Penny as well are very much helping us in all the different medias to keep on top of the subject about the yeah. ever evolving financial scenarios and how we can better protect ourselves. Will you come back and talk to us again? 100%. Anytime, Donnie. I love it. Thanks, Thanks so for much. Me. Oh my God, a pleasure, my man. Okay. Uh, Jane's and Noseworthy, check them out. It is okay to hit a financial rough patch, and it is okay to get some help. This is Out of the Fog. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back, everybody. It's your boy, DC, and you know I've been laughing sitting next to these two. <laughs> Keith and Kathy from the incredible Spirit of Newfoundland Productions. How are you guys doing? Great. Fabulous now. I love yeah. it. Yeah. I know, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Stay tuned, though. Great yeah. to be sitting. It's the only time we get to see you down in the chair. Listen, that's, that, that's a problem. You're busy. We don't, we're all on the go, aren't yes. we? Yes. Yeah. And I'm very happy that you're here. Yeah. Oh, how great. Well, the last time I saw you, I believe, in, in terms of a quality hang, was when we were gathered at the Masonic Theater there yeah. down on uh, Cathedral. Yes. for a special announcement regarding the building that you have called home for many a year at this point. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, it, it was home, like fe 15. February f February 14th mm -hmm. was the 15th uh, anniversary. We bought it on Valentine's Day. You did? 15th anniversary, no yeah. Way. So and yeah, they fell in love with it. And exactly. we fell in love, yeah. Still in love. Yeah, but it is, yeah, so most people know that we are moving out March 31st. Mm -hmm. We are seconds away from announcing where we're going to be going. <gasps> Uh, but uh, you know, yeah, a number. I w I wanted you to have that scoop, well, it's good but it's just a l moment too early for us to release that. So <gasps> a few things got to be signed. We're just building excitement. <laughs> no, you're hyping me. You're hyping me. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. And yeah. a lot of work goes into that. And finding a venue that can house the number of people that are clawing the walls trying to get into your dinner and shows, and yeah. let alone everything else that you do outside mm -hmm. of those four walls, is pretty incredible. Yeah. Am I right? Definitely. And the space, you know, whatever we go you go to is going to be fabulous uh, Kathy and Peter have flipped many uh, venues into beautiful yeah, theater yeah. spaces mm -hmm. for the years yeah we developed wow. four theaters so we're going to go somewhere else uh, and it will be we do 120 shows a year so <laughs> there's like there's lots of venues in town want us to come because of sure course. why wouldn't they hello uh, mm. and uh, anyway so we'll this get that announced. looking nice actually we could right get a yeah. <laughs> yes, you know, I a few tables and I, got, yeah. I know how to cook I can make something in the back Perfect. there right, right? yes Yes. And uh, but the, for the Masonic itself, it's a beautiful thing. It's like the new owners are uh, they're putting a lot of money into it. So wow. it is going to be a beautiful. Mm. It's going to be a number of years, few sure, years, sure. because they're from the inside out. Mm -hmm. They're redoing that. They'll put more than ten million dollars in that. And uh, it's amazing, yeah. So I was going to put my ten million yeah. in, but I just <laughs> I, know. I decided to put it elsewhere. I, yeah, you know what? You're smart. And I almost yeah. spoke up and said I want to put my ten million mm -hmm. dollars in, but I was like, no, let them do that for yeah. now, right? So it's going to be gorgeous down there, and uh, wow. so it's really great for the city of St. John. So we're really happy we were part of developing of it into a theater, which can now be developed into a bigger theater. You know. Uh, a very uh, prestigious theater. Well, it's funny, yeah. back you know, a few years ago when we began sort of teaching everyone around us to call it the Masonic Theater. Yes, exactly, you instead know? of the temple. Exactly, right. which people. has its own history. <laughs> the right. Chamber of Solitude, or whatever yeah. that little moment reflection. is there under the stairs. Exactly, yeah. yeah, Chamber of Reflection, which is incredible and very amazing yeah. for everyone yeah. involved in mm. the organization, uh, epic. And there's a few books as well that you gave me to read about that. But we'll zoom out and talk about them and focus right. back on Spirit of Newfoundland. And there's something when I walk into the, you know, the lobby of that space, sign on the wall, land and sea, 
Wonderful Grand Band, Codco, Codco. Spirit, Spirit of Newfoundland, Newfoundland right there. Boom. Well, we're 26 yeah. years old. That's unreal. And you know, and what's amazing, even this past Christmas, like for example, mm. like, uh, cause we only have, you know, the seasons, we're now in the middle of, almost at the end of a, a, a February festival wow. uh, of shows. We still have a show tomorrow night now. So please everyone come out to that. It's come a, out to ABBA, ABBA, ABBA. Our longest running right? show. Longest Is it running the longest show? running yes. show? Yes. Yes. Yeah, gotta get the scoop, speaking of. are <laughs> always, like you said, clawing at the door, especially for ABBA. Oh yeah, for sure. And yeah. I just want to throw this over to Keith, because you know we just went through Christmas. We had 48 shows of that and uh, seven uh, or nine luncheons, and they were all sold out. Wow! Keith wrote them. This is the first <sighs> time, and we were just really happy for Peter Halley, who has done all the shows for 26 mm -hmm. years, and you with know, co-writers, of collaborators. course, along the way. Oh, lots of collaborators, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you have to collaborate. It's wonderful. But this is the time that y this is the only time that P that Keith that. Peter had trusted, and Keith wrote mm. a show, and he directed it, and it was the most, it was fantastic. And he's off with his hub season. off having a Pepsi, just loving life, watching <laughs> you make it all happen. Yeah, yeah no, so he's, he's busy. He's hard at work. He's very busy. Yeah. He's got yeah, his own announcements coming up. As oh, if yeah. he's hub off, I yeah. know. Well, you don't yeah. sleep in the world of yeah. culture and performance and hospitality. No. No one got their feet up. No, yeah. not at no. all. Well, we got to be creating, but we're, I think it's a disease, really, because, <laughs> you know, we just came from, like, we just came from New York City. That's I funny. know. I was, I was I hoping you were going to ask me about uh, well, we haven't uh, got there yet, but now here we are. Tell no, me all about sorry. it, guys. Yeah, we just took a little uh, trip down to New York, and just <gasps> to take it all in. I mean, Kathy's been there a bunch of times. I've yes, been there a few true. times, but it was just, I mean, we brought a few uh, members of our company that haven't That's been there amazing. before. So just showing people, um, all they know is, is theater right here or right. Toronto or something. Yes. But bringing it to that level of excitement was just so much fun and so inspirational. <gasps> just to take snippets of what you saw throughout your trip and bring it back and put it into our local theater scene is, come on. What do you see as the next for you with Spirit of Newfoundland? Well, do you see, that's a loaded question. Okay. Well, go, you wanna answer <laughs> that? No, I'm just going up through the ranks, you know, yeah. um, show by show, month by month, season by season, mm. and just helping the business grow. And right. they've, they've treated me so well along the path and put me on this trajectory upward, so you Maybe know, there's nowhere to go but up, and mm. I'm on the way. I'm so excited about the future, mm -hmm. and I can't wait to find out where that's going to be. Maybe New York, sure, girl. Sure, maybe New York. Um, yeah, no, we'll make an announcement real soon. But I, you know, the future is bright, mm -hmm. and uh, you, you know, way? it's like it's a beautiful thing. Like we are so blessed Do doing 120 shows a year. Like, come wow. on, in this town this size, it's incredible. Uh, and every night is mm. just jammed with great laughter and yeah. fun and applause. Someone asked you what you do for a living: I sing, dance, laugh, clap, eat. Beautiful. You can count that on one hand, sir. Yeah. Yeah, and like she said, we had an amazing Christmas last year. You know, the coming mm. Christmas is going to be just as fabulous, I'm sure. Best um, season ever? You think? Best season ever, yeah, I'd say, yeah, best season ever. Wow. Just was flawless, it was beautiful, the people were great. Might have been after COVID being that, sure. but it just felt yeah. like that. It felt a little different, and people were different, and uh, they just had such a good time start to finish. And uh, yeah, so love you know, now we're going to repeat that for the summer. Now of it's course. too bad we couldn't keep the decora decorations up, but uh, <laughs> so the <That> summer, <laughs> yeah. And we're also moving the screech room too, by the way. So yeah, so it's like I know that uh, time is running out of this, but moving the screech room, the screech, you know, we're doing screech ins and all of that up on uh, Queens Road. So we're wow, moving our yeah. offices, and so all those announcements will be made real soon. Yeah, we'll so come we'll back and talk more about it. all summer. We definitely will come back because we also developed a wicked kitchen party last summer, and I we're know. expanding that for this summer. That's as amazing. Well. So there's lots of news coming up. Listen, if only you were bored, I don't know what you come <laughs> up with. I know. <laughs> Keith and Kathy, thank you so much. Spirit of Newfoundland Productions, 26 years making us laugh, sing, and dance, and everything else. This is Out of the Fog, and we'll be right back after this break. Welcome back, everybody. This is Out of the Fog, and this is just a roller coaster of a show. We're talking about all the things, and what a better way to end our hang tonight than to talk to the Charlie's Angels up on this couch <laughs> of Music <laughs> and L. How are you doing? 
Hey, Dan. Doing good. You're doing yeah. good. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Well, I'm glad to have you here, and I would love for you to take a moment and let us know your name and what you do at this incredible organization that we love. Cool. I'll go first. So I'm Sarah Newell. I'm the Marketing and Communications Manager at Music NL. Boom. Love it. And I'm Chanel Roll, and I am the Connector Program Coordinator at Music NL. Amazing. And I am Mariana Castro Carvajal. I am the Programs Coordinator. Um, I want to ask you, what led you into your love of music? Oh my gosh, it's always been a passion for me um, from a very young age. I, I, when this, people asked me what I wanted to do with my life, I said rock star. Oh yeah. And I'm living <laughs> that best life right now. I love and, that. and music in L is just such a great way for me to also connect with the music sector mm -hmm. here in Newfoundland and, and help other people whose dreams it's to be a musician. So, so right. it's amazing. Yeah. So great. And you? Pretty much the same. It was always a passion of mine. Back home, we have something called the Bahamas National Youth Choir. Mm. And I remember seeing it as a kid. And that group just like amazed me so much that I always wanted to sing as well. So that's how I kind of got into the industry. That's so cool. Yeah. And you, Mariana? Uh, I think I got it from my mom. Yeah. Yeah, she was always very near to music. And she always loved to sing in choir. So I, I got it from there. And then I didn't really want to study math anymore <laughs> after <laughs> middle school. So I was like. <laughs> Might as well study music. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I feel the same, and as a musician and a lover of music and a friend of Music and L, um, I can only say that my time in the music industry has been so heavily influenced by the guidance and the mentorship and the support and the programs of Music and L. So I want to ask you, how proud are you girls to see this organization? I would say at the most successful and impactful that it's ever been in its history of being an amazing organization. How does that make you feel? Makes me feel great. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it, we always joke, but kind of seriously joking, that we're the best music industry association in Canada. <laughs> well, that's what I say to people, I know, actually. That, I literally say that. It. I said it yesterday. And we have so much pride, and music has always been so ingrained in Newfoundland Labrador culture, so and it's just growing with um, newcomer musicians coming mm. in and our culture is just growing and growing and it just yeah it's a real sense of pride it's amazing us. yeah and how do you feel when you tell people you work for music and L and you know that through the funding and the programs and the services that you've been able to impact the future of so many musicians in our province proud it's proud to be such a part of such a great team mm. first of all like where it's, it's a small group of us about six of us on staff right. and we do so much work and I think the work that we've done has been phenomenal so the fact that we can make such a huge impact with such a small number is amazing, first and foremost. And to see how the organization has grown in membership, mm -hmm. especially just over the past like two years, like it's amazing. What's your favorite part about working with Music NL in the run of a day? What do you look back on on Friday at 5 o'clock and <laughs> say, you know what, we kicked some butt this week? Well, how, what was that like for you? Yeah, I think that for me it's just the interaction. Uh, of us, of all the staff with the members. Mm. Sometimes like they just pop into the office and we have a good chat. Or sometimes like we are just hanging out in the office and just telling jokes and just relating with that music jargon that we all know. Totally. <laughs> so it's, it's it is okay. its own language music yeah. Yeah. in yeah. so many ways. A new office. Yes. Yeah, so Tell us more. not only a new office in the physical sense. So we uh, kind of moved in. We're partnering with uh, Gower Street United mm -hmm. Church. So we've lovely. They've painted our new office space <laughs> for us. They're such <laughs> lovely people. Um, yeah. So it's 99 Queens Road, yep. Old Gower Street United Church. We've kind of coined it as Play on Gower. Mm -hmm. So um, we're getting set up. You know, like I said, fresh coat of paint. We're starting to get our our desks and everything set up. But it's also available to rent for musicians oh. and we're trying to create this really amazing downtown creative hub. Oh wow. Yeah, so it's really exciting things are coming in the next year or so. That's um, so exciting. And also, we have a new office in the virtual yes, world. Yes, talk about the <laughs> virtual yeah. world. Um, so actually we kind of, um, I don't want to say stole, but we're inspired by Music New <laughs> Brunswick because we were collaborating with them on something and they invited us into their virtual office and it's basically like Pokemon, like yeah. top down yeah. game. Yeah. but. 
as an office and it's completely replaced Zoom for us um, because we all have our little people and we all have our little desks with all our plants and whatever we want on it. And when you get close to someone, their little screen pops up and you talk to them just like a Zoom meeting. That's unreal. And it's yeah, so amazing. Yeah. So because we service the whole entire province, now someone from Labrador, if they want to pop into the Music NL office, they can pop into the Music NL That's office so important. and chat to myself or Rhonda or Chanel about connection, uh, connections or uh, Mariana about the programs. Um, Rhonda to me is one of the most inspiring team-minded leaders and she truly leads from the back. She is not trying to hog any of the attention and here we have a proof of this tonight. So many leaders <laughs> want to be on that couch and she says, girls, you go and you talk about Music NL. What's it like to have a leader like Rhonda in your midst? I'll ask you first now. <laughs> Rhonda is so skilled. Um, she worked with the Board of Trades for a long time mm -hmm. and her expertise is mm -hmm. amazing and the work that she's done First of all, just improving the whole infrastructure of Music NL, growing its membership, training us, making sure that we get a lot of opportunities in governance and everything like that. She ensures that we grow as individuals, we grow as professionals, especially as artists in the industry. So she's been amazing to work with. I know, she's fantastic. Rhonda, we love you if you're watching yeah. this show. <laughs> Guys, we're in our final moment. What do we want to make sure that the viewers at home understand about Music NL and what's happening in 2023? I'll leave it to you. Okay growth and we want to be able to reach the whole entire province mm -hmm. is our is our big want and that like i said we want to create that downtown creative hub a welcoming space for everyone to come and create their music and be a part of the sector and we just look to grow and to better serve our community in 2023 and beyond oh, so amazing yeah. will you come back and tell us all the exciting things that you're doing Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. I love it. Anytime. There's room for me on that couch. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Listen, thank you so much for coming and thank you so much for all the hard work you are doing to help make our music industry what it deserves to be. And it wouldn't happen without you. So thank you so much. Thanks thank for you. Having thank us. you. Guys, this is Out of the Fog, and we'll be right back after this break. everybody we had a great old show again here tonight I'm blown away always by the number of people that I'm able to meet and hang out with and talk about the great things that they're doing all across the province thank you so much to the music and L crowd who we love so much they came through talking about the growth and the sector and everything that's to come and I want to thank everybody else for being on the show as well but I want to take a moment just to throw to my girl Rebecca Gladney she was on the show last week and she had this little book going on. And I want to let you know that Chirp's Large Day is available in all the spots you want to be. Bannerman Brewing, we're talking about Down Home, Pipers, and of course online, Google Chirp's Large Day. And I had a large day, and I hope you had one too. This is Out of the Fog, and we'll see you guys next time. And if you want this book, drop me a DM, and this little puppy can be yours. We'll see you next time. If you have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. Your driver has tendered his resignation. I've lined you up a new driver. City TV, Tuesday. You must be the investigators. Investigator. Aren't you in recovery? Well, I'm guessing that's sort of how you lost your driver's license in the first place. You got a lot to learn about the PI business. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta color outside the lines. <laughs>